Welcome everybody back to A to Z podcast, an Ultraman podcast where we talk about everything Ultraman under the sun. And today we're going to do our first news episode. Woo! Tell me something good. There's lots of news from all genres and we'll be uh, hitting on them all today. Isn't that right? Yep. And with our news episodes, they're not going to come out as frequently as other podcasts. So this isn't a hey, here's the top headline for this thing. We're going to kind of collect things that are going on until there's enough to make an episode out of it and just discuss it. So it's not... So uh, you, probably. you've probably heard all of these before and you already know what's going on, but this is more so uh, just an opportunity for me and swoos to con- uh to have a conversation about it and to discuss these things think of it more like a quarterly recap of news topics i guess and then we will be peering into what's coming up things have been announced as well right and i also just realized i didn't introduce you i am john Endor Geim, and as always swoos is joining me hi i'm swoos the doctor of disaster the madman man of plan and the science scientist and i did that out of order yeah well, we introduced out of order, so I guess it's fitting. What, whatever. Well, it's fine. It, it works. Yeah, we're all good here, man. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to start with Ultraman news. Then we've got some Sentai and some other miscellaneous news. And then, for some reason, a.k.a. the 50th anniversary, Common Rider decided to drop some bombshell news here. So we'll oh, end yeah. with the I am a... Uh... Pretty excited to talk about Batman, but I guess you guys know that already. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, let me get started here. Um, first off, uh, Ultraman Taro was the most recent Blu-ray from Mill Creek that's been released. It's been out for a little while, and in a couple weeks, uh, we'll have Ultraman Leo coming out. Actually, in a few days here now. Um, Not the date Ultraman Leo. Right. The um, Ultraman Leo will be the next release, and they've also announced that on June 15th we'll have two Ultraman Zero releases. Which the first is fair because uh, Zero has so much content, right? That's right. So the first one will be Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle Seasons 1 and 2. Uh, season two is called the never ending odyssey as well as the movie mega monster battle ultra galaxy the movie which is ultraman zero's first appearance so would you say you would watch this uh blu-ray first are they gonna be released at the same time or are they gonna release them separately no they'll be released the same day okay okay yeah so if you're a stickler for continuity, yeah, you could start with this, but um so I spoke about Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle with you before, haven't I? I uh, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen the movie, but you haven't seen the series, I think. Uh is that the one where he goes and he makes his team? No. No, the no, I may not have seen the series. Zero doesn't appear till the movie the series is um so if you remember in the movie you follow this character who named ray who can control kaiju yeah that's the the series is about him and the team that he follows okay yeah so it's really cool it's kind of it takes it takes like inspiration from ultra seven how Ultra uh, 7 Dan Morboshi could con- use uh, capsules and control certain kaiju. This is, he has a, he has a device that lets him control kaiju to fight alongside him. But that's more like a focuser of his own power, right? Right. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's a really, really cool show, but if you, you're not going to it for an Ultraman, there's not really Ultraman in the show. 
it's all about the monsters. And th- this is the show, besides X, of course, that really got me loving Gomorrah so much. Because Gomera is like... Ash to Pikachu is Gomera to uh, Ray. Right, he's like your um, your primary go-to kaiju. Exactly. Was it's... Gomera um, used a lot by Seven? No, um... I don't even know if Gomera is in Ultra Seven. Gomera, first Gomera's first appearance was in um, Ultra Man, nineteen sixty six. Right. Um, the Seven used Wyndham, which you might remember from Zet. Right, I remember Wyndham. Um, and I think three others, but no, he he doesn't use Gomera, and I haven't seen Seven in its entirety, so I couldn't tell you if he appears in it. I don't think he does, though. Hmm. Yeah, so that's quite exciting. The <laughs> next the next uh, Blu-ray we're getting is a collection of two movies and two specials which is Ultra Galaxy Legend Gaiden Ultraman Zero vs. Darklop Zero, which is a sequel to the movie previously stated. Mm-hmm. Then you have Ultraman Zero, the movie, The Revenge of Bel- Belial, which comes out after that. Then you have Ultraman Zero Gaiden, Killer the Beat Star. That's a sequel to Ultraman Zero, the movie. I don't think I saw that one. You might have. I don't don't know. And then it also includes Ultraman Saga, which I'm pretty sure you haven't seen Saga. No, because the first time I saw um, the special thing in that, uh, that was when it uh, showed up in that other special. Uh, the new one. What was the new one? The the one they just did the special after Tiger, not Tiger. Uh, is that? Oh 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 yeah yeah yeah. You're talking about Ultra Galaxy fight the Absolute Conspiracy. Yeah, he showed up in that, didn't he? Yeah. And like that was the first time I had seen him, so I was like, hey, what this? And oh, uh, this is okay. what he's from, right? Ultraman Saga. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I know that for a fact. Right. So I'm absolutely enthralled that these are getting released as you know ultraman zero is my favorite ultraman so just being able to have his stuff on blu-ray is just extremely exciting for me hey man i'm happy for you like it it probably should have happened last year to be fair but um well yeah things happen so yeah i had theorized they would release it last year to coincide with Zero's 10th anniversary, but there were quite a many of circumstances to prevent that from happening. I mean, it may have happened last year if things happened normally, but the fact that it happened the year after, it it pretty much seems like they wanted to do it this way and then they couldn't. Right. They're not there going to even to that, but hey. Yep, and then... I mean, these releases are absolutely fantastic, but I do have one nitpick with them. Mm -hmm. It leaves out Ultra uh, Zero, uh, Ultraman Zero Fight, parts one and two. They're just not included. But I believe they'll probably release a third set with Ultraman Zero the Chronicle and then include include Zero Fight on there. But what else would they include? Or is like, or is that just so much content it could get its own DVD? So, a lot of people ask me about this. Zero the Chronicle, uh, Ultraman Zero the Chronicle. While it is his series It's not really. It's basically a clip show. It's everything that I had already mentioned in the previous releases. 
but, cut up and broken into 30 minute formats. Oh, uh, so like it's just it's just all the good bits that lets you pretty much get the entire gist of Ultraman Zero's journey. Right. Okay, I gotcha. And while that's all great and good, I do kind of am annoyed by it because it's not in chronological order. Wait, what? Yeah, so the first few quote-unquote episodes are Ultraman Zero the movie, not Mega Monster Battle. So you get Zero's movie, and then later episodes show you the origin of Zero. So I don't know why they formatted it that way. It's just, it's a little uh, nitpick I have. But for some people, previously to these releases, it was kind of a pain to track down all of each individual special and movie and to figure out what order to watch them. It was... It was a chore, to say the least. So, a lot of people like to watch Zero the Chronicle as an encompassing... Here's all of Zero stuff in a tangible manner. I can just watch this and have seen all of his stuff. So, it's a good thing in the sense, if you don't want to spend the time watching everything, here it all is. But at the same time, you're missing out a lot. It's not necessarily in the right order. And you won't be watching it for the ultimate satisfaction watch. It's just a... It's more of a utility watch, I guess, to say. Right. Okay, I get you. So, I believe it was sometime around last year. Uh, dur- I, th- I believe it was Ultraman Day, to be honest with you. But last year, they did a live stream where Mill Creek spoke about their upcoming releases, what they had rights to, and what they plan to release. Mm -hmm. And it was also spoken that they plan to release Ultraman Zero the Chronicle. So, my guess is since Ultraman Zero the Chronicle is a clip show show per se they wanted to put Ultraman Zero Fight on that so that we would have an incentive to purchase that Blu-ray as well oh uh, yeah as, in a marketing standpoint that makes sense I suppose it's it's yeah. an underhanded way to, to get a sale but I get it I mean the business brand in me really gets it and no no i understand, understand that it marketing position but i mean is it uh, slightly scummy a little bit but does it kind of annoy me that that's the only thing left out of these yeah but if they give it to me in some form i'll be satisfied and i'm going to buy every single release that they put out anyway so more content's more content. Content is content. Yeah. So, in summation, I'm excited. <laughs> right, right. That out of the way, zero DVDs, and we're getting them summer. Yeah. So, Pretty yeah. Soon. This will be a yeah. zero kind of summer, I guess, at least after June. Right. So, let's... You got anything else you want to say on that? No, no, not really. I mean, not much else to really to say on it, right? No, not really. Um, next up, the Marvel Comics Ultraman um, Rise of the Ultraman miniseries issues 1 through 5 are now out in paperback form. So they've compiled it into a trade. If you know anything about comic books, it's just what they do. A storyline run is done. They compile it into what's called a trade, whether that be a hardback or a paperback, mm-hmm. and read it as book form. <laughs> Most people prefer reading their comics this way. 
I do as well. I preferably prefer it over single issues, but I've been buying the single issues for this run because a we didn't know we they need to see, get anymore. They need to see. Yeah, we're talking over each other. Exactly. They need to see that there is demands for it, so that we'll continue to get this book. So. I've purchased it as paperback, so whenever I go back and reread them, I'll reread the paperback book as opposed to opening up each individual issue again because it's annoying. Right, which um, reminds me, I still need to read issues four and five. Yeah, get on that, man. I want to do an episode on that. (laughs) I mean, if you'd want to do that episode now, I would have already read them. I just... eh. Look, we'll get got, to it. I got a lot of things <laughs> going on, and I forget that I have it to read whenever I have free time, okay? Oh, man, no problem, man. We'll get to it. But basically, they announced that there would be an ongoing series. So the, so the Rise of Ultraman was a miniseries that was the origin story of Marvel's version of Ultraman. Um, now that that's completed, they have an ongoing series called the trials of Ultraman and issue one is already out. Issue two should be out. If it's not out by the time you're hearing this, it'll be out soon. Um, and I don't really want to go too far into this because a, you haven't finished four and five of the previous uh, series. Right. And like, we'll and do an episode on it. So no need exactly. to go that far into it in the news cast. Right. So just letting y'all know it's out there and spoiler alert. I love it. It is so. good. I, I know I haven't <laughs> read the fourth and fifth chapters, but the first three chapters were really good. I liked it. I know yeah. some people were complaining. It's a bit slow, but right. I feel like, Mm, that's just somebody who was wanting an episode of the week type thing and not like a bit in a story type deal. Right. So let, let me go on to this real quick. Oh. Um, This isn't calling anyone out. And if you didn't like it, that's fine. I just want to put this out there. I've seen a lot of people not like this book and I've had conversations with people who have told me that in regards to issue one, that they didn't see Ultraman punching a monster combat in issue one is a boring book or they're not doing it right or whatever. Before they even released issue one, the press information was this is a five part mini series and that this is establishing the origins of this version of Ultraman. So you need to look at the first five issues as a complete episode or a complete story as opposed to just issue one. And I don't know how I don't I don't know if this person was of a earlier generation. I know older comics you would get a quote unquote one and done. You would get this book, it would have a beginning, middle and end and for this one book that's how it was written. I haven't read comic books consistently since maybe 3 or 4 years ago. But while I was reading it that's not how it worked. It worked on story arc. So your story arc was that whole experience. And it would sometimes be two or three issues, sometimes four or five issues. And once you read all of that story arc, that whole story arc was a complete middle and end of a story. So I just felt like a lot of these complaints we're not a complaint of the book, but a complaint of how comics are written these days. Hmm. 
Well, I don't read a lot of comics, and but personally, I appreciate ones that are willing to take their time and go slower in for the sense of, um, you know, just building a better foundation for a world and story altogether. Like one of my favorite light novel series that I've been reading, um, it is very slow. Like there's not a lot of action really in them in the first couple books because it's like, well, we're trying to build this huge world. And it just takes a lot. Now, I'm not saying there's no action in them, but like it, it's over half the book just like setting things up and like getting you to where like you understand what's going on, and all of it feels necessary. And like, honestly, I'm appreciative of the background. So we like even like in comics, like I read that's like okay, this is fine to me because I like that they're setting up everything. They're taking their time. They're not just trying to rush into something just to like sell something. You know, there's like we want you to enjoy the story. And we want you to know what's going on because it could be confusing if we don't. And so that's fine. It's okay to go at a slower rate, in my opinion. Absolutely. And this this miniseries has lore. It, it, it takes its time to set up this universe's lore. And... Man, it's really interesting. Also, I really appreciate it for this because I already do know a pretty fair amount of Ultraman, and this is deviating in a lot of ways. So if you went in thinking this is just the 1966 Ultraman show, then and like you didn't read this at all and you started reading whatever the next part is, you'd probably be really confused about what's going on because there's a lot that's different. Yeah, it's for one, it doesn't take place in the 60s. It's modern day. Right. But it's such a different take. And what I love about it is you don't need to know anything about Ultraman to pick this book up and enjoy it. That's why I really, really think this is a good thing for Marvel because it's reaching Marvel fans. Mm Mm-hmm. They don't need to know anything about it. They can pick this book up, read it, and have a really engaging story to draw them into this universe. And then once they learn what Ultraman is, then they can look up all about the shows and the tokusatsu and all of this other stuff. It's a really good gateway for new fans. And that's it's genius. I love it. It. I'm so excited for this book to continue and uh-huh. to create the, new Ultraman fans. Yeah, because the more it spreads the word, like the more people will like it. And the more people that like it over here, the more Ultraman stuff we might get over here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, speaking of, what do you think the chances are of Ultraman being in the MCU? <laughs> No, I doubt it. <laughs> I, d- I doubt it, but not impossible. I doubt it, and I also don't think I want that. I don't think I'd want it either, but not impossible, right? Um, I've... This is going off on a tangent again, but um, when when issue one came out, they did an alternate cover with Spider-Man standing on a shoulder, mm-hmm. and, I mean, as Tokusatsu fans are wont to do... They're like, oh, it's a reference to, and then fill in the blank. But yeah, as you know, there was a Spider-Man Tokusatsu series. Yeah, Spider-Man. In Japan. Yeah. So, was the was the robot called? I always forget. Leopardon. Yeah, Leopardon. Leopardon. Change the Leopardon. And <laughs> yeah, so it was a really crazy thing. Like, even had a giant mech robot for some reason. Oh yeah, but... it's 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 a fun thing and um if you have Disney Plus, they did a I can't remember what the little docu series is called, but it, you can poke around on it and the first episode of like this like docu series on Disney Plus is a uh, is is the first episodes on Japanese Spider-Man. So you get to learn a lot about how it was made, the history behind it. And it's basically the reason why Power Rangers have Megazords. But to bring it back 
I would be really into seeing like a crossover comic with that version of Spider-Man and Ultraman. Mm-hmm. But I don't really want Ultraman running around the MCU. I don't want it to be tied down to MCU or not MCU, but Marvel Comics in general. Um, right. I don't want it to be tied down to the Marvel Comics continuity. I don't want to see Spider Man running around or or Iron Man flying by as Ultraman's punching a uh, kaiju. I don't want that. But if they did like a limited side series, kind of like how Batman and the Ninja Turtles have a side, like one shot, like graphic novel side story where, Mm -hmm. where where Batman fought with the Ninja Turtles. If they wanted to do like a side thing, that's not part of continuity. I would be cool with that, but I don't want it blending. I understand. Yeah, I and I can see where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. So, moving right along, um, Ultraman Trigger. Right. Have we this, even talked it, about him at all? In our last episode, we mentioned that the trademark name existed. Right. I think that's all we knew at the time. So, it's official. He's named Ultraman Tricker. Toriga, probably. I don't know exactly how they're spelling it in Katakana. We still don't know a lot about him. We did get a teaser image. He's silhouetted. Mm-hmm. He's he's black. You can see his color timer lighting up, and you can see his face. You don't see his coloration. You don't really see much about him. Right. But he's standing right beside Ultraman Tiga. So, it it in my mind all but confirms that this will be tied to Tiga in some way. You know, because you know he's standing there; it would make sense, right? So, whether he's Tiga's disciple, whether he's Tiga's offspring, whether he's Tiga's brother—I don't know. Man. Whether he's just Tiga's By homie. Or just friend, yeah. I don't know, but a lot of people, Tiga is their favorite. So I'm really excited for those people to have something Tiga related because he hasn't really been in the spotlight. Yeah, I was gonna say the greater universe or whatever. Um, he really hasn't been around. You see Gaia and Dino show up, but you don't really see Tiga show up. You see Cosmo show up a lot. Yeah. Um. So I'm just glad that he's finally getting his due. And it's probably related considering how last year was Zero's 10th anniversary and we got Zet, which was a disciple, air quotes, of Zero. And having this being... Tiga's 25th anniversary having this current series tie into Tiga some way it's a good idea I'm mm-hmm. excited we'll have to wait to see more there's really nothing else we know about it just yet so moving right along Shin Ultraman a lot of Shin stuff lately huh we'll get to that later so first we got its trailer. Oh, we did? 30... Yeah. Did you not see it? No. I sent it to you. Did you? Yeah, uh, we must... got it. When was it? Several months ago. Several months ago? Oh, I probably saw it and just forgot about it. It was 36 seconds of people in suits and business and lap attire standing about we got a couple shots of a cgi noronga and the what's the second one there's two kaiju we saw noronga and 
one more. You'll have to forgive me. I'm forgetting the name. <laughs> I don't um, remember watching it, so oops. So we saw two kaiju, and then we saw um, Ultraman standing up in the last shot. Right, and he notably did not have his color timer. Right, so there was a lot of fans who are really kind of upset or annoyed or <sighs> fill in whatever adjective you want to put in there, but there was a lot of hoopla about him not having his color timer. Now, personally, I don't care one way or the other. The This... This version of Ultraman is a departure. It's not connected to the greater Ultraman universe. It's its own thing. So once you separate it and it's its own thing, have at it. You know? Mm -hmm. It's designed off of the original concept art of Ultraman. These proportions are a lot more linky. His legs are extremely long. His arms are really long. He's very more alien in proportion. You can tell there's not a human in the suit. It's a lot more alien proportioned by design. Um, And as you mentioned, he's missing his color timer. Now, if you look at some of the original concept art, he was drawn in a lot more alien proportions they had to make a more human proportion so that a human could fit in a suit you mean like original original ultraman original ultraman correct well original and, original ultraman uh he had a few things he uh was supposed to do that didn't happen to well yes but i mean once they settled on the concept art of <laughs> what ultraman was going to look like um and the color timer was a very late addition He wasn't originally going to have a color timer. The color timer was added so that they could create a sense of suspense in the show because Ultraman can't talk, or he didn't at this point. Um, So you needed to find a way of conveying that he was in trouble. So once his energy started being depleted, it would blink and would alert to that oh he's in trouble you know it was a way of creating suspense for the children with them removing that a lot of people felt that this is an ultraman you know he's always had the color timer and that he should have the color timer it, it's actually quite iconic even if it's not something that you primarily think about every time. Exactly. So, I'd say let's just wait and see how it shows up on screen. How does it go about? It'd be a funny Uh, gag if he he actually did have it. It was just he had a giant one strapped to his back. uh, Now that I wouldn't... Now that I wouldn't really care for too much, but <laughs> I mean it's not gonna. They've already released a figure for him. Right, right. But I think but, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> right. So, moving on, as you just stated, we got the toys. We saw a two two monster vinyls for for the Naronga and the other one I can't remember his name of right now. Mm -hmm. We got those two and they're already out. We got an ultra action figure. The the current series um, posable action figures Mm -hmm. for Ultraman. We got a version of this design for Ultraman. And we also got a vinyl figure for him as well. The vinyl figure stands quite a bit taller than the act- the other Ultraman vinyls, as you were, would expect. And then they also showed off a figure arts and another figure from a brand I uh, from a from a line I wasn't familiar with. But people are getting the toys, whether you like the design or not. That's 
your your opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. So they stated that it was going to come out summer of 2021. And then about a week or two ago, they stated that it has been delayed due to difficulties in shooting for the coronavirus. So right. they had to they're delaying it. But they didn't say when they they didn't give a date. They just said it's delayed. You know, it's delayed indefinitely, but it's going to come out. We're just we don't have a date yet. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully everything comes out right. Yeah. I mean it, it should. I don't know if it'll just go into development heck forever. No, it won't. It it'll come out. I, I have faith it'll come out. Um we failed to mention that Hidedeki Ano. I don't know if he's directing this one. He might be producing this one because I said he was directing it, and someone corrected me on Twitter. Thank you, by the way. Uh, not being sarcastic, like seriously, thank you. Um, I think they said he's producing it or writing it. He wasn't directing it, but okay. he's involved. He's involved somehow. He's the one that directed um, Shin Godzilla right. as well as he's the creator for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Right, right. I think you brought this up before too. Right. So he's also involved in a project we will be mentioning at the end of the show. So, yeah, the one I'm excited about. Yes. So I think... I don't know if Shin, Shinji Higuchi is the one directing this. I would assume he's directing it given he's involved somehow too. Right. But he's he's um he's known for the uh Gamera trilogy, I believe. The the good the the Gamera trilogy from the nineties that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Big everyone's turtle. favorite Gamera stuff. So yeah. excited for that as well. I can't wait to see this movie when it eventually comes out. Hopefully, mm-hmm. now they haven't said anything on this, but hopefully we can get an American like western release of this film either theatrically or online some way because Shin Godzilla actually got a theatrical release in America while it was out. So hopefully we can get something from that as well. I'd watch it. Yeah, for sure. I so, miss movies. It's been a year. The last film I saw in theaters was the My Hero Academia film. And you've seen a movie more recently than I did, because the last movie I saw in theaters was the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I didn't even see the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. But yeah, it was... I was in the theaters like the week and a week and a half before everything shut down. That whatever March it was. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, moving anyway, on, moving We're, on. We don't need it. So next, so, um, Mariah. Yes. Go ahead. Would yeah. you like to? Oh, uh, well, you you know more about it, but okay. Let me let me go ahead. Um, Superaya. Everyone loves doing their own online subscription service. So Subaraya decided to throw their hat in the ring, and Subaraya, it's out now. They have have launched Subaraya Imagination, <laughs> which is a online subscription service for Japan only, and they, I believe they have pretty much everything under the Ultraman catalog that they've made as well as other projects that they've created like um I feel like they missed an opportunity here. They could have named it um since it's you know you know we have Disney Plus, they could have called it Ultra Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra Plus. Yeah. Plus yeah. Ultra. <laughs> yeah. See there you go. You got it. <laughs> No, yeah, that that would be a funny pun for sure. But they they there's they're gonna have Gridman on there and the other um, Superaya um, productions right. that they've made. 
throughout the years, like Red Man and um, I believe I can't remember what his name is, but I think it's like Mirror Man or something like that. Mirror Knight. No. Um. So Mirror Knight is based off of I believe his name is Mirror Man. Please what correct me if I'm wrong, but um I believe his name is Mirror Man. It was like an older show that they were doing and Mirror Knight was based off of that. Just like um like Jean Bot and Jean Nine and stuff like that. They're based off of Jean Borg Ace, which is its own show. So like those characters were based off of previously existing characters. Okay, I see. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, but to go along with this, they're going to do original content as well. And the most recent one that they've released is called Savingar Fight. So, Savingar, our lovable robot fan, friend from um, Ultraman Z, he is having his own mini series. Our little Savingar all grown up. Yeah, so he's going to have his own little mini series where he is fighting a monster, but it's very much akin to the original Ultra Fight as opposed to what we've have here recently with like Zero Fight and um Vic, uh Fight Victory and uh Fight Orb and the Ultra Galaxy Fight series that we have. The original Ultra Fight was like a three-minute series back in the 70s where they would have an Ultraman fighting a monster, and it was just like a three-minute boxing match where they're fighting. There's no story. It's just them fighting, and it was usually thrown in as like a commercial bump. So, like, if you remember... Like when we were like early 90s, when we are uh, late 90s, when we still had like Saturday morning cartoons mm-hmm. and they would have the cartoon. And then if the cartoon was like an 11 minute cartoon or something like that, they would have like a two or three minute short that they would throw in between. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, so that's basically what the original Ultra, um, fight was was just like these little bumps that they would put in between things so so if you look on there it's like 100 200 plus episodes but they're all just these like three minute little fights that were thrown in in between so this is going to be this is going to be more in that vein but they've got the ultraman z cast back and they're going to narrate it like a boxing match. Oh, so it's going to be like, they, although the characters are just announcers, but it's pretty much just a fight the whole time. Yeah, so so it would be like, uh, it would be like um, Haruki um, being like, oh, he got a good like left hook or something like that, you know? Like, yeah, like and, a, and he's like, oh, hit like, him with a rocket punch, punch or something. Yeah, something like that. It. It'll be fun. It's it's going to be fun, and there's not going to be a lot of substance there, but it's just going to be fun. It's just a goof that's like it's supposed to be like here. Watch monsters fight. It, with the core of it, that's what you want to see anyway. So here it is. Right. Um. So I think they said that they were doing ten episodes. I don't know if it's like ten episodes now and more later. Um. But as far as I know, there's going to be 10 episodes of that. So I can't wait to watch that if there ever is going to be a way to watch it. They did say to stay tuned for a Western release of this. I wonder they didn't if they're... say how. They didn't say when. They just said stay tuned. So Maybe they'll put it on the YouTube channel again. That would probably be the easiest way to do it is just to throw it up on the YouTube channel. But they want to make sure they're trying to use it as a selling point for their Japanese fans. To right. For the uh, imagination, it. right? 
so they don't want to throw it up on the YouTube just for the Japanese audience to be able to watch it. So it might be like, well, we're going to put it up on there, but we'll put it on there later because we're pushing the service. And once it's like reached the well, this isn't going to be a draw anymore. Then we'll put it up over there. It'll either be that or I'm hoping it'll get thrown on a Mill Creek release of something at some point. I don't know what they'd throw it on to. Maybe well, Zet doesn't Zet. even have a he's not in the contract, is he? No, not yet. But I'm just hoping. Uh, one can hope, Canny. Of course, of course. Without hope, I'm just what hoping. are we? Exactly. Um, I'm just hoping we can get a release of it at some point in time. I'm so, sure we will. That'll be real fun. I'm 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 excited to see it. Um and with that. Let's move on to the next thing. All right. So now so, we're actually moving into some Sentai ter- territory of news, right? Right. Um, when I first was gathering these news topics, I was going to talk about the Zen Kaiger press conference where they announced the show. But because of circumstances, albeit we haven't been able to record recently and other things but basically the show is out now and it's like on episode five or six and i just want to mention it real quick because there's not really new it's not really news anymore i just want to mention it i um i've only got the last episode i saw was when they finally assembled the whole team that might have been the last one i've seen as well um but anyway let me just Mention it, it's Sentai's 45th anniversary this year. Uh, so it's Sentai's 45th anniversary, Kamen Rider's 50th anniversary, and Ultraman's 55th anniversary this year. So everyone is getting an anniversary across the board. Woo! Not to mention Mario's 35th last year, that's still kind of carrying oh. over to this year, and then Zelda's 35th. Oh, we can't talk about Mario, he's dead now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> those memes. Um, For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, um, at the end of March, they pulled uh, support for Mario 35, and then they really stopped releasing copies of the Mario 35th anniversary collection, the All-Star one. So th- the joke is that uh, Mario's dead. <laughs> Nintendo killed him. Right. So basically, this series is... It's different than Gokaiger, where Gokaiger was celebrating the 35th anniversary, and they had the ability to use the powers of their previous Sentai heroes by turning into them, so Mm -hmm. their costume would change to the old costumes. This time, um, it's really different for Sentai, because there's not five human characters. There's one main human character, and the other four rangers are robots. Robot. So they, these four other characters are based off of previous uh, Mecha or Megazords, as we call them in Power Rangers. Um, mm-hmm. They're based off of previous Megazords from throughout the forty-five years, and they grow. Uh, uh, they they can they're they're normal size. Then they can grow like Ultraman. And then combine to the Megazords and fight, but and then <clears throat> uh, Zen Kaiser, got... his whole thing is he can fuse them together. Right, he can fuse them together, and then Zen Kaiser, as uh, Swiss mentioned, he's the our human hero whose suit is based off of um, Aka Ranger, which is the first Red Ranger from the first Sentai series, Go Ranger, and. Um, he also has like some coloration. He's he's mainly white with like a rainbow effect on him. That's very similar to the big one. And then he has was, like this uh, big Jack. And he has this big golden mantle type deal that he has that kind of looks like the Green Ranger from Zoo Ranger. Exactly. AKA MMPR for our non Sentai here people out there. Yeah. Um It's really cool because it's such a different take on Sentai. We haven't done anything like this before. So it's exciting on that end. 
but they they also are doing the anniversary thing where instead of him turning into uh the previous sentai he can use their powers by Loading. getting in their weapon or an attack or something like well, that well he hasn't gotten their weapon like none of them have gotten weapons it's just usually like uh no they have i that's right they, they use the gears and then sometimes they get it's like they just did uh well, I remember them doing Die Ranger, and their thing was they had um, lances. Yeah, they'll they'll get weapons. Uh, they'll get attacks. They'll do like a special combo attack or something, depending on each um, t- previous team. So yeah. it's exciting to see that. But besides me just gushing about how excited I am for this show and how much I'm enjoying it. I wanted to bring it up because the person who's singing the theme song is the guy who played Ultraman Dina. Like who's actually like singing like the opening thing, right? Yes. The the singer of the singer of this opening theme song is Ultraman Guy. Or did I say Gaia? You, I think you did. No, it's Dina though, right? Dina is what I meant to say. It's Ultraman Dina. I don't know if I said Gaia, but if I did, I meant Dina. It's Dina. So that's that's really cool. I love to see when like Toku actors. Oh, you see it all the time with um, Common Rider and um, Common Rider and Super Sentai because they're both um, Toei. They're all in house, so you see actors jump back and forth all of the time. Yeah, it's, so it's interesting to see that happen between Ultraman since it's a different studio. Exactly. You do see it from time to time, but it's less often. But it's always exciting when I can see, oh, that's so-and-so from whatever Ultraman series. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think I've gushed about that enough. Go, <laughs> well, I would I would say go watch it, but go watch it at your own risk given there's no official release. Um, if you can find on. it, you know. Yeah, you can you can find it. Um, I don't know so, where, <laughs> but it's out there. Right. Um. So S S S S. There we go. Uh, Dino <laughs> Zenon is out. Um, it's the sequel. Well, is that Squid Man season two? Right. It's sort of a sequel. It's. I don't know how much of a sequel it is because it's so far there aren't any of the same characters, but it's the same. It's Studio Trigger that's doing the animation, and it's Subaraya because because Gridman, right? Um, but it's instead of Gridman season two, we're getting this. So. I'm excited for it. I've seen the first episode. It's different. It's different. I'm, it's different. I'm not. It's not. This is the anime one, Grid- right? Yes. It's not SSSS Gridman. That's for sure. It's different than that. But that was a wild ride on its own. Go watch that if y'all haven't. Seriously. It's great. Oh, yeah. Uh, that anime is really top tier. I, I liked it a lot. And it does not go how you think it will either. Uh uh-uh. uh, it, yeah. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil any of the, the bits. No, I I agree. Ooh. But it's it's awesome. And if you're a fan of the original Gridman or even Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, which was the Power Rangers typed version of, it's the Americanized version of Gridman. Um. There's tons of references and stuff you'd get a kick out of. So go watch that if you have any inkling of Gridman at all. Um, but SSSS Dino Xenon is... It came out a second. couple weeks ago. And it is airing on Funimation. So if you... It's Funimation, I think, if it's not owned by Crunchyroll, Crunchy, uh, sorry, Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll, yeah, Crunchyroll, you know, those really, really hard fish eggs. Mm, um, so, uh, so if they're not 
owned by Crunchyroll. They're related somehow. Maybe their parent company owns both. I don't know the legalities and corporate ownership of it, but they're related in some way. Mm -hmm. But SSSS Gridman was on um, Crunchyroll, but it seems that Dinozenon is not on Crunchyroll, but it'll be on Funimation, and you can watch it for free. But it's just like how... Um, Crunchyroll does the premium members get the first episode and then you get to watch that week's episode if you're a premium member but <laughs> like let's say I don't actually have a Crunchyroll account so when I'm watching like current anime I'm always one week behind because I'm not allowed to see the the most recent one, but once the new one comes out, they unlock the old, last week's episode. So Funimation right now you is can the see episode one, essentially. Do what? So right now you can see episode one. It's out there. Right. So depending on when you're listening to this, you might have an episode or two you'll be able to watch. Um. So I've seen the first episode and I am really excited to watch the show. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, um, but I don't, I can't guess what, what I'm trying to say is I can't guess on what's going to happen. I can't really see. It's not obvious to me that the story is going to go in one direction or the other. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. And especially with prior experience, you would probably call it wrong anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm also not very good at guessing where things will go. And when me and Swoosh watch things together, there's like twists or something. And it's completely obvious to him. And he's like, I saw that 20 miles away. But for me, I'm like, oh, dude, I had no idea. I did not see that coming. Well, so, uh, <laughs> I studied film for a while, so that that is why I would say that kind of stuff usually doesn't affect me as much. But sometimes I still pull one over my eyes. Right. So let's move on. Um, so when I, we first, I first made this list, I had on there that we finally saw – the Godzilla versus Kong trailer. Oh, it's well, out now. The movie's out. So go see it if it's still April by the time this is released because it's only on HBO Max for one month. And if you want to brave a theater, it might be in there longer. So I've seen the movie. Have you seen the movie? I haven't even seen King of the Monsters yet. Those are two things I need uh, to do. Okay. Um, so, I don't want to throw any spoilers out there. The internet is already filled with them. So, if you're trying to avoid them, I won't throw it out there. But I am trying, but I finally do know that one thing I'm pretty sure you've been trying to not spoil for me. Yes, that's the thing I was definitely trying to not spoil for you. But the internet doesn't care if you don't want to see spoilers. It doesn't. It's... <laughs> So, um, so yeah, yeah. But anyway, but we I, care, it, you know, unless we're doing an episode on it, and then it's at your own risk. The movie. What I will say is, I absolutely loved it. What I will say is, in my opinion, it's the best of the MonsterVerse films. That being Godzilla twenty fourteen, um, Skull uh, Kong Skull Island, and King of the Monsters. In my opinion, it's my favorite. I have gripes with a lot of the human characters in Godzilla films and these types of things. Mm -hmm. And this film said, we're going to have the most shoestring plot so that Lizard can fight Monkey. And if you came here to see Lizard fight Monkey, you're going to have a dead gum good time. But if you're one to sit there and pick apart all of the plots and hole, uh, holes and plots and stuff like that, and like that doesn't make sense and that doesn't make sense, you're going to hate this movie. 
But you know what? if you I just want to see him, go what? I think you'd actually have a really good conversation with my cousin because he didn't like the movie. And whenever he saw it, he's like, yeah, it says, you know, mostly because the like, human parts are like just boring. And after hearing it, he's like, oh, I guess he just didn't, <laughs> he wasn't really into the uh, monkey versus lizard part. Yeah. And if you're, like I said, if you're one to sit there and you're like, you want to think about the implications of this and how this relates to that. And I mean, there are times when I want to see that. But I went in wanting to see Monkey Fight Lizard, and I saw Monkey Fight Lizard, and Deadgum, did I have a good time? Monkey Fight Lizard. Yeah. So the, I'll leave it at that. Go see it. I recommend it. Um, I give it Monkey out of Lizard. Yeah. So uh, it kind of went the way I expected, and it, and the way I expected was the way I wanted it to go, so I was happy. That's, that's what's important. As long as you yeah. get out of it what you wanted out of it, isn't that what matters? I mean, in a selfish kind of way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that's it on that. Um, we, I also wanted to mention this in case any of y'all care about Power Rangers. It's related, but the deals with so, a couple years ago, Hasbro acquired um, Power Rangers as a franchise. They completely straight up bought it. So, Bandai America didn't make the toys anymore, and um, Saban sold the rights to it. So, Hasbro is the sole owner of Power Rangers at this point in time. Um, and a, a lot of those contracts that Saban signed back when he first acquired it back in or he sold it to Disney Disney sold it back to him and then he sold it to Hasbro when he re reacquired it back when they were releasing Samurai he made a lot of contracts that were like 10 year contracts so a lot of those contracts like specifically with Netflix are coming to an end like this year, last year. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they purchased it, a lot of those contracts were like grandfather grandfathered in. So they just had to run its course. Well, now that a lot of those contracts are like expiring, there Hasbro's not re upping a lot. One of those being, the fact that every season of Power Rangers was on Netflix for the past 10 years. They're not anymore. They're gone Goodbye. already. Um, the only seasons of Power Rangers that are currently on Netflix are MMPR season one. I think the 2010 redone version of MMPR season one which is trash. No one go watch it unless you just want to laugh at how bad it is. Basically, all they did was take the regular show and put, like, comic book, pow, and, like, bam. Really? Bump, air bubbles. Yeah, and then they put weird sound effects on it and weird, bad, like, PowerPoint transitions. It's really dumb. Oh, um, okay. Basically, they did that between Disney losing... Or selling it to Saban and Saban putting Samurai back on the air. It was the meantime filler while they made new MMPR related products on the shelf. It was basically a way for them to fill out the space until they could put out Samurai. But that's on there. And I think the most recent couple of series, which I wouldn't say watch them. In my opinion, they're not really good. <sighs> In my opinion. But instead, Hasbro is putting series on their YouTube channel. Like the full series on their YouTube channel. Now, I think they only have a couple of seasons on there now. And I don't know if they're going to keep them on there. They could either keep them on there or pull them down and put another series on there. Mm. They're not, they're not up front with 
their plan for this. So a lot of people speculated it would go to Tubi or something like that or Pluto TV, things like that. But it seems like they're just going to throw them on their YouTube channel. So as long as they're out there for people to watch who want to watch them, I don't really care where it's at. Right. Just as right. long as it's accessible, you know? Yeah. So if you were wanting to watch Power Rangers here recently, um, movie, DVD, well, the problem is everyone got the same ideas. And they were like, oh, well, let me buy up these DVDs real quick. Well, the DVDs have been out for a long time at this point. They uh, Shout Factory put them out several years ago. Right. Most of them are out of print, and they're not going back in print. And I don't even think Shout Factory has the right to make them anymore. I don't know if they still have the license for it. Because, like I said, a lot of these... A lot of these legal contracts are that Saban signed are starting to go out of effect, and Hasbro's aren't re- Hasbro isn't re-upping a lot of these. So I don't even know if Shout Factory has the right to make them anymore. But a lot of them are going out of print, so a lot of these DVDs are skyrocketing in prices. This is why I say, if you like something. Buy the physical media of it because you never know when it's going to get pulled. Yeah. I agree. I mean, yeah, no, I definitely agree. That's why I don't like a lot of digital content anyway. Like, I prefer physical copy. I'm definitely one to buy CDs still, which is crazy. In 2021, very little people actually buy CDs. I bought a CD a couple months ago. Oh? Yeah, was that it? Ultraman. I was like, is it the, the Zet one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool CD. Um, It's, well, during Zet's, um, while it was still going on, they did a uh, CD that had Ultraman Zet's opening and ending all the way to Ginga all of their opening and endings, and then all of the openings for everything else. Mm-hmm. It's a great CD. Right. Okay, but yeah, so, so moving on. Moving so on. Now, um, now we're moving on into the section I was waiting to talk about. We're going to go into the writer news. Because there has yeah. been uh, some pretty juicy bits, and I am super excited. Right. So last week or so, was Common Rider's official 50th anniversary the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, they're, they did a week of streams with Team Rider, which great guys, go follow them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we they announce quite a lot of interesting things. And would you like to take the helm on this? Right, sure. So, um, first thing that they announced, uh, we are getting a Common Rider double anime, right? Yeah. It's a uh, it's pending release date sometime in 2022, um, but like this will be like the first time we're really getting an anime that wasn't like a short little joke animation or like uh that one little thing they did during demo, you know? Yeah. Um, and so far, we know it's believed that it's going to be on Funimation. Is that right? Yeah, they said it would be premiering through Funimation. So uh, what I would assume is it would be very similar to the like SSSS Dinozenon situation, right? Where they're they're releasing it in that way. I would assume, but there's no real details on that. And it's based off of a manga that came out. Um. At, I haven't read it. I don't even know if it's been officially translated into English. If you want to read it, I'm sure somebody fan translated it. So I'm assuming you could read it, but I'd prefer to watch an anime as opposed to read a manga. That's just me. So yeah, I haven't looked it. It soaks in a bit. It just depends because sometimes the manga does some a story more justice, but like if they take their time with it, it should be fine. 
Right. So this manga is a like critically acclaimed, like really, really good manga called the uh, Futo Detectives, which I don't know. You've seen Double. I haven't seen Double. Mm-hmm. Is that what their organization's called? I think that's literally the um the dude who is Double's last name. Like not um Felipe. Not Philip. Yeah. But uh Shotaro. I think that's Sh- I think... Shotaro. Yeah, Shotaro. I, I think that Fudo was either his last name or it was their boss's last name. I can't remember. It's been a while. Okay. I watched I watched Double like eight years ago. It's been a minute. Yeah, I, I haven't seen Double, and uh, I've seen maybe the first couple episodes. But Double's uh, really cool, though. What's really cool about this, though, is a lot of people are excited that we'll get some sort of, um, like, representation of... In this manga, he does an exclusive, like, henshin of... I think it's Lunar Trigger, or not Lunar Trigger, um, Fang Trigger. So it's Fang with the blue side. Oh yeah, because he always it's always a Fang Joker. Right. He does so. Technically, it's, he could have always done Fang Metal and Fang Trigger, but they don't. Right. Because I guess they didn't want to do more suits. Yeah, so this is the first time that's appeared. So a lot of people are really excited to see that. And um, there's a lot of speculation. Hey, maybe because of this, we might actually get figures of this form or something like that. Basically, people who are really fan, uh, are really big fans of that form right. are excited because they get to see it in action as well as potentially getting like a Soto figure or like a Soto candy toy figure or a... Um, figure art or something of it we're gonna get a card for gomba rising it's gonna be great <clears throat> i think that already exists it probably does given <laughs> that gomba rising does literally every form is specifically ones they make up so gomba rising for the best forms you'll never see in the show yeah um in addition to that they also announced common rider black sun there was no specific date given, but it's not going to be a sequel to Common Rider Black, but it's going to be in the same vein as Common Rider Amazon. Well, they already had a sequel to Common Rider Black. Called Black well, I mean, what I mean is it's not a sequel to Black RX. It's not going to be the same people. It's going to be like new actors and... A new thing is what I'm saying. Which is good for me because I've never seen the original Black or Black RX. I've heard they're really good. Like I think those are like the best show ones from what I've heard. Yeah. Um that's that was also adapted into Mast Rider the first time we tried to do <laughs> it that. It was and it was awful. Yeah. To be fair, the Don't... second attempt wasn't good either, but yeah. It existed. There was even a crossover yeah, episode, actually, with a uh, MMPR. Yes, they did, and I remember seeing that as a kid, completely confused as to what he was, and not really figuring it out until much, much later. But um, it's like so, one of those things that when you're researching you wanna... it later, opens up like a hidden memory in your brain, like, oh, I get it now. Right. So if you want to like give the people kind of like what was common rider amazons yeah so common rider amazons um is well okay so back in the show era there was of course common rider amazon and that sort of provided the groundwork for amazons because once again they're completely unrelated shows but the whole idea behind amazons was like we're going to do a an extra show that is in the vein of the original Amazons, which was too dark, really. And then it got canceled, I think. Didn't Amazon get canceled? Ah, uh, you know a little bit more about this than I do. So I I think so. I think it got uh, canceled. I think be it because you told me that before. I'm pretty sure it got canceled and it's still I think it finished out its series, but I think it was like cut short. But yeah. Amazon, like the original, almost shut down Common Rider because after Amazon it was like a huge gap. Between that and then Kuga. 
Wait, really? I'm pretty sure there was like a there's a pretty sizable gap. Like didn't, Amazon almost did, put him out. Did did not did Black not come out after um Amazon? Um I think I Amazon came out after hold on, let me check out the order. But I do remember like after Amazon happened, um it hurt him pretty bad and there was a gap. Okay. Yeah, I can look it up real quick if you want to take the reins for a yeah, bit. So I, yeah, so basically Kamen Rider Amazons was like a more adult take on Kamen Rider. It, and Kamen Rider has done this a few times before. Um, because Kamen Rider's original manga was such a dark tone so that when it was adapted into a tokusatsu. It, um, they had to soften the edges around, you know, specifically for like Kamen Rider Ichigo, the original Kamen Rider series, 76. Um, it, it was a lot different than the manga. So with Kamen Rider Amazons, they were targeting a older demographic and it was actually Amazon prime Japan exclusive series, which it's kind of funny to me because yeah, they're probably Rider, Amazon. Amazon and it was on Amazon. Yeah. Um, which Ultraman Orb Origin uh, Saga was also an Amazon Japan uh, Prime exclusive. Oh, so I have an answer for you. Yes. So Black did come out after, um, and Black RX both came out after Amazon. Or okay. Amazon. Uh, however, Amazon came out in 1975. Uh-huh. Uh, Black came out in 1998, or yeah, 1988. Okay, so it was a big. Break there was a 13 year gap, and then Kuga didn't come out until 1999. So right, so yeah, so like he, it was in there, like it didn't get shut down completely. You know but what? If it wasn't for that Black, makes complete sense because that makes complete sense because Black. Uh, crossovered with uh, MMPR, so it would have had to have taken place in the 90s. Yeah. But yeah, if it All wasn't right. for Black, though, we probably wouldn't have had any Rider content for 30 years, give or take. Right. So, Amazon's... I watched the first season, and there's a second season in a movie. I could not finish the second season at all. Basically, it's a lot of gore... It, it's going for a horror theme, but so the it's first, not like a horror movie. So yeah, like we're saying, the, they have an adult theme for the first one, and it's a little gross and a little gory, but it's not thing super bad. Um, right. However, even with that being said, they censored it anyway. Yeah. And that frustrated the creator so much so that he was like, well, I'm going to make it to where you can't censor season two or else there'll be no content. Yeah. And he so. Basically, it was a, like I said, it was an Amazon Prime um, show. So, of course, it wasn't going to air on TV. So, because it was popular, and I mean, like, season one was really good. Uh, I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So, so they were like, it's popular, so let's air it on TV. But they had to edit it to air it on TV. So, they cut out a lot of stuff. So that really ticked off the creator. Like as you said, he wanted to make it to where you couldn't air season two on TV, and boy did he. He did. He did. I still have not finished it because I I'm a I can stomach some gore. I don't like it at all, but there's just a point when I just can't watch oh, it because yeah. I feel really sick. Look, I, and, that stuff doesn't bother and, me, but some of the sound effects and visuals they used, it was rough. And it also yeah, didn't help so, that they kept re-showing one scene over and over again. I won't really go into it, but um, if you start watching it, you'll see a scene, and I, then I hope you are prepared to see it a lot. Yeah, it's it's gross. But will, basically... Go, go ahead. I will say this, though. If it wasn't for Amazons, uh, we wouldn't have uh common rider uh Z Cross in um build. Well we might have him, but the actor was in both. Oh, I was I did not know where you were going with that. Yeah. I did not know where you were going with that at all. Yeah, yeah. The actor uh for 
Z Cross was um just some guy in well he wasn't just some guy he was an important side character in Amazon season two. Okay. So anyway, well, my point is this is going to be a series in that same vein. I just hope they lay off the gore. Because I I mean, you can put some in there, but just tone it down. We don't need season two of Amazons. Right. Like, I actually want to be able to watch this show. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you can make it adult theme. Just don't make it Saw. Yeah. All right, but um, moving on. Moving on. Another very exciting thing. So, I, I mentioned before, there's a lot of shins going on right now. Well, here comes Shin Kamen Rider, set for 2023. Yeah. And I think that's all, all right. we really know. Yeah, same creative team. Um, Hideki Ano, I yeah. think. I think I, I double checked and made sure he was actually directing this one. Mm-hmm. I think he's actually directing this one. He directed this one, and he directed um, Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla, but I don't think he was in the director role. If he was the writer, the producer uh, for Shin Ultraman, I don't know. But he wasn't in the director role for that one. But he was involved. Yeah, he was involved for sure. So, yeah, so we don't know anything about it. We don't even really have a look. The only thing we have is like a paint splatter Con- type Con- image of him. Yeah. And he looks like he's just regular Kamen Rider with like his n- newer suit. Not the suit we saw in Ghost, but the one that we've seen you know, more recently when he's depicted. And um, it just he's wearing like a jacket. A yeah, it just looks like a stylized Kamen Rider Ichigo with... um with like this stylized art rendering, you know, mm-hmm. so there's no suit. There's no anything. It's just like a concept piece of art. So there's really nothing to go off of. I'm just excited that it's a thing. Right. Which is exciting on its own, right? But here's the thing I am most excited about coming up next. Wait, so, before we move on to that, oh, sure, sure. let me, um, so I saw a lot of people talking about this and they're like, is this going to be related to Kamen Rider Shin in any way? No, no, oh, it's not. No, stop. No, it's not. Um, I can so see Shin, why you think that. Shin is just the word for new. It's the same kanji as Atarashi, which just means new. So, like, you know how Nintendo put the new 3DS in front? Because people like to market things as being new. Yeah. Which, as someone who's in that vein, that business mindset, I absolutely hate this because as soon as you label your product new, it's not new anymore. <clears throat> it's going to sit there for like a month and then it's not going to be new anything, new anymore. And then when you're talking about the product afterwards, you're going to have to say the new one, but not the new, new one. The one that was called new, but there was one that came after. You see what I'm saying? It creates confusion, and I just don't like it. It's like how um, at Microsoft are like, hey, let's release the Xbox One X. And it's like, the Xbox? Like, the, the like, no, no, no. It's the, uh, so it's not the 360, no? No, I'm talking about Xbox One. Oh, so the first, re- no, no. Not the original Xbox, the Xbox One. Oh, I need the new uh, Xbox. Uh, was it called the Xbox Series X? Yeah, that's what it's. Or, like. or, or is it the Xbox One Series X? Or what? What is this thing called? I, as not even like someone who's a big Xbox guy, I don't even know what they're called. I don't even know what they're called either. And I'm an avid gamer. I think the root newest one is the Series X. But like, it's, why um, couldn't they just do? What Sony's doing, just like it's the PlayStation Five. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. PlayStation One, two, three, four, five. Sony knows how to count. Like, I mean, like, if they wanted to like name it something new, I get it. Like, because you know, there's there's no way to copy the Nintendo method of naming a new thing every single time. Because you know, they have... say Nintendo just names like you got the Switch, you got the Wii, you got the GameCube. You know, when you're talking about it, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, but usually, like, their name has to do with, like, what the console looks like and their new special feature that they've added. Exactly. But as far as, like, Xbox, you know, like, after the 360, they could have called it the 720. 
Right. That would have made more sense than what they gave you. You gave you Xbox One. So, I don't know, dude. Anyway, moving on. So, no, so no, it's not related to Ultraman or Kamen Rider Shin. No. It's a new thing. It's its own thing. Or maybe it will be. Wouldn't that be, like, the big, like, flip the rug? Like, if Shin is just in it just to mess with everybody. Ugh. Um, or like if a, you like a new if Shin, you like, as far as Kamen Rider Shin, if you like body horror, you might enjoy this film. Hey, look, we're going to create a like new one, movie? right? It's going to be Kamen Rider, uh, a uh, new Neo Shin. New Neo Shin. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, now you're just, uh. Common Rider, uh, or now you're just Ultraman or Dark Black Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I left one of those out. Um, uh, Orb Noir Black Schwartz, I think. Dark was in there, so it's Ultraman or Dark Black Noir Schwartz, I think is what it is. Uh, it's, yeah, anyway, it's in there. Some, something like that, but you're just getting to that level's ridiculous. Yeah, but no, Common Rider, Common Rider Shin is weird. It's gross. It's akin to the Fly, if you know what that is. It's like body horror, and it's not for me. That's for sure. I always think it's funny but, when they um show his suit and like new stuff, and it just like stands out so much. It's so weird. But if you like that thing, then you would really like that. I hate that kind of stuff, so that's why I'm so negative toward it. I just don't I don't like horror in general. And once it starts getting gross or gory, I hate it. I mean, but, that might be a bit easier to consume though, because it's just like a, a two hour movie, maybe. Yeah, something like that. And also it's on Toei's YouTube channel for free if you want to watch it. Well, so if, if you want to watch it, you can easily. Um, let's move on to something we are extremely excited about. Yes. So excited that we left it for the last. Ah, uh, so yeah, this will be our last news topic for this episode. We and actually I, saved the best for last. I am so happy about this one. You guys have no idea. For the first time ever here in America, we are getting a release of a Common Rider series on DVD. That's right. We are getting Common Rider Zero One. As a DVD, Blu-ray release, we're not sure. We, actually, we don't know if it's DVD or Blu-ray. But um, it's coming over here, and it's going to be a Shout Factory release. Yes. I... I <sighs> hoped this would come. I hoped this would be a thing. But with... Last year and this year, I was... Not expecting it. I I hoped it would happen, but I honestly didn't believe it would. I was very hopeful. I'm happy. I'm so glad. I'm going to be buying this. Like You guys don't even know. Yeah, and I... I'm while, so happy. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything before like I get myself in trouble here, but now I have an idea that I might want to do when it releases, just so more copies I know get bought. Um, I don't... I will buy this. I don't have a particular, like, I'm not particularly attached to Zero One as much as you are, but I want to buy it so that we can, uh, so that we can tell right. them. Yeah. Exactly. So we can tell them to do more. Because yeah. I want Gaim so bad. Yeah, that's like a thing, too. It's like, I don't, like, Zero One, I think, was really good. It's the best Rewa <laughs> common writer. So far. Well, actually, yeah, you could say that. Well, we, Saber is kind of a thing. Saber is a thing. Um, I really like Zero One. Zero One has problems that aren't its own fault. So. But um, I forget. Zero it. One, because, because of what happened with uh, COVID yeah. last year, it really, really screwed with. Common Rider Zero One, so the pacing's weird, and there's a whole like, there there's some stuff, but in general it's good. In, in general it's good. It's just you can see where 
Yeah, like it looks like they're building up a lot, and then all of a sudden, a lot of loose ends get tied up really quickly and kind of sloppily. And it's like, okay, so here's where they stop filming for a while. Right. And as far as uh, Ultraman Z is concerned, they were facing a lot of those same restrictions, but they didn't. In my opinion, you really can't see those seams that much. You well, know what I mean? Well, I mean, I think it helps that they're not like a year running. Right. So, and they also did a lot of clip shows, which is something Ryder typically doesn't do, but they actually did do, I think, in Zero One to fill in a week. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. I don't, I know Sentai always do, does an annual um, clip show. And I know, uh, does Ryder do one every year? I don't think so. I know Sentai usually does, but Ultraman, you're probably going to get at least two. (laughs) Well, okay, so Ryder does do clip shows, but the clip shows are usually like auxiliary episodes. Mm. If I, so like, um, I remember Zero One's clip show had something to do with like, uh, what was it? It was, I think it was like a murder mystery type thing. I, I don't remember exactly. But like they brought everybody in and like they commented on the memories and stuff. Right. So um yeah, it was like an off episode, like a special. That's normally what right. they do, I think, for common writers. As far as Ultraman, a lot of the times the clip shows are budgetarily reason like a reason for the budget because they're able to with with Common Rider, they don't do a lot of the special effects we've come to expect from Ultraman. Um, Ultraman has tons of miniatures, all the suit fights. They actually, I mean, a lot of the explosions are CGI, but they do use actual pyrotechnics from time to time. So there's a lot of budget that goes into these episodes, and sometimes you have to do a clip show to like keep the ball rolling you know what i'm saying yeah. um we want more episodes ultraman, yeah. ultraman likes to save they don't they don't like to cheap out on the quality of the special effects they like to save money by doing like a clip show or something like that while, whereas common rider and super sentai you can see oh they didn't put a lot of money in this episode, that's for sure. You can you can see the seams a little bit more. And like one episode that's coming to mind is uh remember the Pegasus armor from Q Ranger? Yeah, I remember that. Remember how like halfway through the series when when it when they when he uses it again, there's like a giant like priest in the front of it. Yeah, and like in one scene, the sticker's peeling off. Yeah, it's it's not great, and you're like, oh, we definitely didn't have enough in the budget to fix that. <laughs> so you can see the seams a little bit more than with Ultraman. So it's funny because um. Notably in Saber, right? I didn't notice it at first, but I think they were actually using like the swords for like combat and stuff. But there's just one episode where it stands out a lot, like the um, the gray dude who ha- has the giant sword, Buster. Buster, yeah. He uh, his sword is just essentially replaced by this piece of cardboard that's cut out in the shape of his sword and painted <laughs> to look at it. And sometimes from now on, and like it's been a thing that comes back, like when he's fighting, like if there's a scene where he's actually gonna have to be swinging it or actually doing something with it, they replace it for that. Yeah. And like it like bends and folds and wobbles, and it's so bad. And and we're 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 kind of like dogging on a little bit of this for like common rider and stuff, but it's because we love it. Yeah, and we we we're not putting it down because we're still we still enjoy it it's it, just it comes from a place of appreciation right like if yeah. you can't laugh at it when like you know what they're doing and you don't right. blame them for it well i kind of blame saber 
a little bit because they they chose their budget poorly for things that were yeah. I didn't like. But at the same time, like when I see things like that, I can't help but be like, oh, they're doing their best, and I appreciate that way more than the other thing they did. Right, and like to double back on the Q Ranger thing, mm -hmm. that is just like one instance that pops out in my head. But like Q Ranger as a whole is one of my favorite Sentai. It's absolutely fantastic. Great story. Love the suits. Love the special effects and stuff like that. It's a great show. But it's just you can see those like budgetary constraints a lot more in those shows than you can with Ultraman. And this is kind of off topic. We're already off topic, but um, the I was having a conversation with this really nice gentleman on um in one of those uh, Facebook groups the other day, mm -hmm. and he was um talking about how he wished the new generation heroes um series would go back to like the Showa era and the um like Heisei era where the series were like 50 episodes as opposed to like 25 right and i was arguing the the opposite i'm like actually in my opinion i think the show is overall better off because of the the cut in half air air date um, because they're allowed to spend more money per episode for these special effects for these um action set pieces for the suits and right. and um like with Ultraman and, or with Kamen Rider and Super Sentai they have to basically since they got to double the payout or the the episode count they have to half the amount they can spend on each episode and if it's not in the budget you can start to see where the problems start rising right. and they they've Ultraman has has uh combated that with having multiple clip shows which i don't like clip shows most people don't like clip shows but it's a necessary component to keep costs down and to keep these action scenes looking fantastic i'll and, tell you man and overall Ultraman like said, when you're looking back you can say oh i don't like clip shows but it's not like a clip show ever stands out in your mind right it's always like well when you're remembering the series you just remember the good episodes which may be the way they were because they had the budget because they did the clip shows exactly and i mean if you're watching it week to week while oh this week's a clip show you might be annoyed but as an overall full package experience when you're binging through that you can skip that episode you know your overall experience of the show is better off i mean hey it's so better than people... having your uh your episode preempted by soccer or whatever yeah um that's such a weird thing um sports yeah like one year super sentai and common rider were skipped a week because they had to air the little league baseball finals or something it's such a weird thing anyway not the point point being is i was like I think Sentai is actually better off because both you and I come or Ultraman is better off because both you and I come from uh Kamen Rider and Super Sentai background and we can see how Ultraman or how, how these two series have to stretch their budget because think about it this way. While in my opinion, Ultraman is the best, um quality show we're getting right now out of the big three mm -hmm. it's definitely smaller in the um in the uh financials um it's actually here recently out out sells super uh, sentai but common rider's still top dog uh yeah. saber notwithstanding because saber's trash and it's not doing very well but well they were not yeah um Saber notwithstanding, Common Rider outsells Ultraman. So if you doubled the count, you're not going to increase the budget. You know, you're not going to magically get more budget. It's just going to be divided out and you're going to get a less uh, quality product. And my second point with this gentleman was um, he was bringing up 
like for the Showa era, they were getting like 50 episode series and stuff like that. It was a different time, obviously. But the point being, when Ultraman and Ultra 7 came out, Tokusatsu, these types of Tokusatsu shows were top dog. They were extremely popular and they were extremely sought out. So every network wanted to throw as much money as they could so they could have their own tokusatsu series. There was a tokusatsu boom in the late 60s, early 70s on these network television uh, these network television channels. Um, that's not the case anymore. Even though I love tokusatsu and you love tokusatsu, and there is an extremely passionate fan base both western and domestic japan yeah it's still a smaller the bubble. pie is smaller than it used to be like there's still exactly. a pie but it's like it's gone down anime is so much larger of an industry and anime is struggling as a whole of an industry in general and that's a conversation for not this podcast but it's such a larger industry comparatively so it's unrealistic to expect them to be able to put out an output of 50 plus episodes for every season exactly like, it's like i'm personally i wish at least for um zet it had more episodes but that was yeah. mostly because Zet had so much going on. Yeah. Like, there was, they could have, like, as far as story wise, uh, done way more with it. Yeah. But they just didn't because they had an episode constraint. And, but uh, I get it, I, though. I know, I don't know if you know this, but I was, we'll go into this more on our Zet episode. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the um, writer passed away, like, right as the show was like being put into development so he had written the first few episodes and the last couple episodes and had a general role yeah i think that I think... was going into it but mm -hmm. a lot of like the one-off episodes and stuff like that that was the other writers that had to step up and kind of put the pie together so i forgive it for that you know because not only was that the case but they were also having to deal with filming constraints due to Corona and all of this crap going on. The fact that we got such a good show out of Zet, I'm blown away that they were able to make such a good show with all of those limitations and unforeseen, unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, I agreed. But um, on that note, I think it's time we wrapped up. <laughs> One more thing. One more. Wait, but we already had the best thing. What What now? Well, I just also wanted to mention that not only is Kamen Rider Zero One getting a physical release, it's also going to be officially released via mm -hmm. Tokushatsu as well as Kamen Rider Ryuki. Now, Tokushatsu is a Tokusatsu channel, per se. Mm-hmm through shout factory and um it's it's a little confusing on how to actually see this stuff they put some of it on their youtube channel but it's a channel on if you have you ever heard of pluto tv uh no i have not so pluto tv is a free app you can download i'm speaking out of america because i don't know if it's available in other countries but it's for our American listeners, which are, is most of you. Is it like Quibi? Uh, no, it's not like Quibi. Um, it's a free TV provider. Basically, it's these, these channels that they make up, and it's, it's not video on demand. It's you can select whatever channel you want, and whatever air is airing is airing. So Toku Shoutsu has a Toku channel where they show the Sentai series they've released, which is basically G-Ranger to 
like Hurricane Joe, I think is the last one they were able to release before that was canned. Um, so they show those. They show several Ultraman series because Mill Creek has um, licensed them to be able to show it digitally. So you can see it on Tokushatsu as well. And now they're going. They they've already put Common Rider Kuga or is Kuga? Yeah, Kuga. They've already put Kuga on there. And they've put the original Common Rider, um, seventy six. So you can watch it that way. And now, now Zero One and Ryuki will be on there as well. So basically, you can turn it on, and they'll just cycle through like whatever they're showing. You can watch, hey, an episode of Mega Ranger, and now we're watching an episode of Ultra Seven. But it's cool because these channels are so specific there's an anime channel there's a channel that plays nothing but Yu-Gi-Oh. there's a channel that plays nothing but one piece there's a channel that plays nothing but naruto so you you've got these specifics there's a, cha- a channel that plays nothing but like gordon ramsay shows uh basically they have like two or three hundred channels of very very specific things right and it's Completely free. It has ads because it's like an actual TV show. But it's like, like streaming, a, like you get to pick what it is, or is it like, well, something's playing at all times and you just have to see whatever's on? That is playing at all times. So it's whatever's on. But Tokushatsu is also on a thing called Tubi, which I've heard Tubi's not re- not available in uh, the UK. So this was, I think, specifically to like Americans and I maybe. Canadians, I don't know about that. But Tubi is the same thing, but on demand. So it's, oh, I want to watch Ultraman Orb. Let me go to Tubi and pull up Ultraman Orb episode two, whatever, press play. Tubi is the same thing, and all of the stuff that's on Tokushatsu through Pluto TV is also on Tubi. So I know it's confusing. It took me a little while to figure out how all this worked. So basically when I say it's on Tokushatsu, it's wherever Tokushatsu is, it's available. Does that make sense? Uh, Yeah, more or less. Yeah, so basically... If you want to watch this, but you can't afford getting a physical release, while I do urge you to get a physical release, um, you can watch it officially, not like everything else, but officially, you can officially watch it on Tubi and Pluto TV via Tokushatsu, Kamen Rider Zero One and Kamen Rider Ryuki. as well as all of the Ultraman stuff that Mill Creek right. has put out so far. Huh. That was a long-winded explanation, but <laughs> it was a little confusing, and it definitely confused me for a little while until I figured it out. Right. But yeah, so that should do us for our news episode. This was absolutely... A fun time. Thank you for joining me, Swoos. Uh, always a pleasure. And we found out some really cool stuff today. I can't, I can't wait until the next news episode so I can find out more things that I already knew or forgot about. Yeah. Um. See, the best part about this is I'll compile them, and you would think, oh, that's cool when I show you. And then by the time we finally get around to making an episode two, you would have already forgotten it. So you get to experience the joy of learning about it a second time i know isn't it great (laughs) remember everybody when you live life with a short attention span you get to experience everything all new the next day yep that's right so um we are going to wrap this episode up if you want to contact us please send your questions and your comments to our Gmail account at a to Z podcast at gmail.com. 
if you want to follow us on Twitter, go to A to Z podcast on Twitter. Follow us on or subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, type A to Z podcast in YouTube in case you want to listen to our podcast via YouTube. Some of you, some of you like to listen to it on YouTube, and I've come, I've come to understand that some people prefer to listen to their podcasts on YouTube. While that's not the majority of you, that offer is up there for those of you who enjoy that. So go f- subscribe to our YouTube channel. And um, I think that should do us. All right. Well, you know what they say. We got a... They got a what? Do, do the pit. Do the pit. Oh. Watch out for the next one. <laughs>